Good morning, everybody. Bolorit bari Luis. Or shall I say, good morning, dear friends of Jesus. Thank you so much for your hospitality and your welcome. I really feel the Holy Spirit here in this nation. And I shared yesterday a little bit about this call on on your nation. Armenia, your call is to host the Holy Spirit. And, and he will come in a new way. You saw a lot of good things with God. You experienced a lot of good things with Jesus. You experienced the Holy Spirit in different ways. But he wants to come with a new dimension of God. And you will see signs and wonders stronger than ever before. But you have to open your gates. You have to open your heart. Because it's not about teaching and theology. It's about your heart. Your heart is a gate. And you can open it for the Holy Spirit. And your church, you have to open the gate. God is bigger than what you ever experienced. God is bigger than what you ever experienced. And I also speak to the nation of Armenia. Open the gates for the King of Kings, for the Lord of Lords, and especially for the wonderful move of the Holy Spirit. So this morning I woke up with a simple sentence in my mind. I am the Lord, your healer. That's what God said to the people of Israel in the desert. He took care of them wonderful. Every day fresh food. The shoes of them, they're never broken. And there was no sickness at all in Israel. And God himself, he introduced them to the people of Israel. I am the God who heals you. With other words, with other words, I am your doctor. In Psalm 107, verse 20, same sentence. I am the God who heals you. One name of our God. He has different names. Yahweh the God who takes care of me. And another name is Yahweh Rafa. I am the God who heals all the time. I mean all the time. 24 hours is healing available if you go in touch with God who created heaven and earth. I want to read one scripture from Psalm 103. We all know this psalm. Psalm 103. Look here. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins? Do you believe that? Raise your hand. Oh, it's good. I'm together with believers. 
ինչ լավ է ես հավատացյալների շրջանումը But let's go further in this sentence Եկեք շարունակենք Who forgive all your sins Ովներում է քո բոլոր մեղքերը And heals all your diseases Եվ բժշկում է քո բոլոր ցավերը Not only some Not only some diseases Ոչ թե որոշ ցավերը Heals all your diseases Այլ բոլոր ցավերը If this is the truth Եթե սա ճշմարտություն է two or three together in his name որ երկու երեք հոգի իր անունով հավաքվեն If this is the truth Եթե սա է ճշմարտությունը And Jesus is here Ուրեմն Հիսուսն այստեղ է He is here as a healer Նա այստեղ է որպես բժշկող Jesus is a healer Հիսուսը բժշկող է He is a doctor When Jesus showed up in Israel Երբ Հիսուսը հայտնվեց Իսրայելում From the first moment առաջին իսկ պահից No one organized a healing crusade Ոչ մեկ չկազմակերպեց բժշկության ծառայությունը No one organized healing seminars and things like that Ոչ մեկ չկազմակերպեց բժշկության սեմինարներ կամ նմանատիպաներ From the first moment after Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit Բայց հենց այն պահից առաջին պահից երբ Հիսուսը մկրտվեց Big crowds of people followed him մի ամբողջներով մարդիկ նրան հետևում էին all kinds of diseases ամեն տեսակ հիվանդություններով դիմնայսդ պիպլ դիվահարներ bleeding people արունահոսող մարդիկ leprosy people բորոտներ all kinds of diseases ամեն տեսակ հիվանդության դեր մարդիկ and he healed all of them եւ նա բժշկում էր բոլորին not only some ոչ միայն բորոշների ոչ թե իր ասիրելիներին everyone who came to him with a sickness Ամեն յուրաքանչյուր ոգ, որ մոտենում էր նրան և ուներ հիվանդություն, հերանում էր նրանից ամբողջության բժշկված։ Իմ առաջին փորձառությունը բժիշկ Հիսուսի հետ այն էր, երբ իմ կինը բժշկվեց։ Ես ու կինս շատ զորավոր կերպով ազատագրվեցինք թմրանյութերից։ Բայց կինս իսկապես հիվանդ է։ Կնաց բժշկների մոտ, նրան դեղեր նշանակեցին։ Եվ նրան ասացին, որ առանց այս դեղորայքի դու երբեք չես կարող Another healing book. But men kunenk men kurish bezeshkov. This is the Bible. Yev da astvat ashunchne. This is a healing book. Sa bezeshkov kirke. This is the best medication at all. Lava kuin terorai kavor karogeline. So we found out everyone who came to Jesus got healed. Umen kartu men kvor ove kaf Hisusi mod bezeshkvets. We found out that Jesus. Everything accomplished on the cross of Calvary. Մենք տեսնում ենք որ Գոլգոթայի խաչի վրա ամեն մեղքի ու ցավի հարցը Հիսուսը լուծեց. He took away on the cross every infirmities of our life. Every sin of our life. Նա մեր կյանքի ամեն մեղքը գամեց այդ խաչին։ But he took away every pain. Բայց նաև բոլոր ցավերը վերցրեց։ Every sickness. Ամեն հիվանդությունը վերցրեց։ Emotional sickness. Զգացմունքային հիվանդությունները, ֆիզիկական հիվանդությունները։ Every disease what you can imagine. Ամեն տեսակի հիվանդություն, որ կարող եք երևակայել։ Was on Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Հիսուսի վրա էր Գոլգոթայի խաչի վրա։ So I I woke up this morning with this healing thing. Արտնացել եմ այսօր այս նախադասությունը։ I was not sure is this the word of God for today. Անկեղծ ասած վստահ չէ, արդյոք սա էր տիրոջ խոսք այս որվան համար։ Բայց երբ մտա այս տեղսենյակ, ես ծավը զգացի, վիզիկական ծավը զգացի։ Ձեզնից ոմանք այս տեղ են վիզիկական ծավը։ Ես չեմ սիրում ծավը։ Ոչ ոգ չի Ով է այստեղ, որ ունի ցավ իր մարվան, վիզիկական ցավ։ Ձերքն էտ կպարձեք։ Ես, սո մենի։ Սո դյուլ ռեսիվ յոր հիլինգ դյուրինգ դիս մեսիջ։ Դուք այս պատգամը ձեզ համար է, որ դուք պիտի բժշկություն ս� Մի սպասեք, որ ձեզ համար ինչ-որ մեկը կաղոթի։ Սուր փոքին այս տեղը։ Եվ նա հպվում է ձեզ։ Ուղակի ընդունեք։ Հետ գնամ իմ կյանքին։ Մտացեցինք ուրեմը գնոչ ես համար պիտի աղոթենք։ Չգիտեմ, կանի ձերկ դրեցինք իրակլխին։ 
we declared the scriptures. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Then we thought we have to do something else. So we anointed her with oil. And then we prayed again. Nothing happened. Then we did a very stupid thing. We said to her, it's about your lack of faith. You don't have enough faith. This is very stupid. But we tried everything. Then, then we started fasting. But nothing happened. I was really discouraged. I said, Jesus, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Where are you? Nothing happened. So then I was on tour in Germany preaching the gospel. And during the tour, I called my wife. And, and the sound of her voice was completely different. I knew something happened to her. I said, what happened to her? To you? And she said, I'm healed. I said, how? And she said, it was so easy. One night I went to bed. I kneeled down in front of my bed. I kneeled down in front of my bed. And she, and she said, I give the whole day back into your hands. And a voice from God came. My daughter, you are sick. And she said, yes, you know this here. Lord. Now you will be healed. And in a second she was free. No big deal. The sovereign healing move of God in seconds. We have to get rid of our ideas how God has to heal us. You have to believe one thing. He is healing 24 hours a day. And the healing methods of Jesus, they were so different to what we do with healing. If you will read the Gospels, please do this. Study the healing methods of Jesus. He never prayed for sick people. He never did that. He spoke to them. He did some prophetic acts. But he never prayed for people. You know, some days, some friends, they brought a handicapped person on a mattress to Jesus. Jesus was teaching in the house. So they couldn't go in because so many people. So they tried to get into the house. And they get this crazy idea to damage the roof of this house. It was not the house of those four people. It was not the house of these four friends. It was someone else's house. So they damaged the roof and then let down these handicapped people, these paralyzed people in front of Jesus. Jesus did not pray for him. He looked at the guy. He said, my son, your sins are forgiven. It's wonderful. The first part of Psalm 103. He forgives all of his uh, sins. Your sins are forgiven. But some religious freaks they start thinking. What is he doing? Only God can forgive sins. We have to get rid of all our religious 
things were going on here in our heads. And Jesus, they didn't say anything. It was in their minds and in their hearts. Who can forgive sins? And Jesus watched direct into their hearts. Because Jesus walked very close together with the Holy Spirit. And then he said to them, I will show you why I have authority to forgive things, sins. It's easy to say your sins are forgiven. But I show you why I can do this. He watched this guy. He watched this guy on the mattress. He said, get up. Get up. Take your mattress. And go home. Oh, if this guy was German, he would say, It's impossible, Jesus. <laughs> From birth on, I'm paralyzed. What are you talking about? Don't you pray for me? I thought you will pray for me. Uh, German would answer like this. A German Christian, he would discuss with Jesus. But this guy was a simple believer. Jesus said, get up and walk. Take your bed and go home. Immediately he got up, took his bed and get, went home. And everyone, ah. Oh, amazing things happen. You know, <laughs> the Jesus method. The disciples, they watched this method. And they thought, oh, this is the way how we can heal the sick people. And the next moment, they met a guy, he was born blind. He was, he never saw something. Then he found out Jesus is in town. And some people, they took him close to Jesus. And he expected the miracle. Oh, Tom is coming with a team from Germany. Tom is coming with a team from Germany. They, they carry a special anointing. And I hope they will pray for me. Maybe this blind man, he thought the same things. Oh, Jesus is in town. His disciples. And I hope they will pray for me. And and maybe I can experience a miracle. So then he found out. Jesus is closer to him than he thought. Now he was in a, in, in a position to receive healing. He closed his eyes. He opened his hands. Oh, now Jesus will come. The sweet Jesus will come. And he will place his hands upon my head. And he will pray some holy prayers. And maybe then I'm healed. So he was expecting things like this. Maybe he thought, ah, I'm not worthy enough for Jesus. Maybe I'm not worthy enough for himself. But his disciples, his ministry team, or maybe they will, they will come and stay around me. Then they will sing some songs. Maybe Peter will wave a flag. And maybe they will do some religious things with me. So he was staying there. And then Jesus showed up, yes. 
What did he do? Listen to his disciples. Listen to his disciples. So what do you think about this guy? Oh, they learned something. The disciple learned something. And they asked the question. Who has sinned, this guy or his forefathers? <laughs> Who has sinned? This man or his forefathers? Jesus was shaking his head. They're always looking for a method. They're always looking for a program. But it is not about a method or a program. He said, it's not about sin. It's about to glorify God. This is crazy. Being born blind to glorify God. I think this is crazy. We all know sickness is not from God. And then this religious Jesus, what did he do? He was spitting to the ground. <laughs> Holy spit. <laughs> On the holy ground of Israel. And this guy was still waiting for healing. And then Jesus created some mud. Holy Israel mud. <laughs> and then he smashed the whole thing into the face of this blind man. <laughs> ah! He was shocked. This action killed all the religious feeling in that man. And it became worse. It, it, it became worse. Jesus said, and now, my friend, go to the lake and wash your face. How would you react? How would you respond? Well, all the people were looking about him. But this guy went to the lake. Because he was open for everything. He was open for everything. Because Jesus was close to him. And he watched his faith. And oh, oh, who is this beautiful man in the water? First time in his life. He saw his face. Who completely healed. He got his side back. He got his sight back. I saw so many miracles like this. If we really believe that God is in the house when we are together, things like that should happen. Sometimes I think, God, can you do nothing better than singing songs? <laughs> Having program. <laughs> you know, I was in a meeting. <laughs> and it was packed with people. <laughs> and there was a lady, she was handicapped. <laughs> she was paralyzed. <laughs> because a car hit her in the traffic. So for seven years, she was day and night almost in the wheelchair. And so she was in a meeting. And we worshipped. God, you are good, you are the king of kings, you are the lord of lords, and what we all sing. And this lady was in the midst of the crowd. And because it was packed with people. 
the air was not so good to breathe. So she thought, I have to drive myself out of the room to, to take fresh air, to breathe. She did that. So she was sitting in the wheelchair. Immediately she thought, I shouldn't be sick anymore. Because Jesus took away every sickness on the cross of Calvary. He cried out for me on the cross. It's accomplished. He took my sickness on the cross to overcome evil on the cross. Why should I carry any more this sickness. So this came into her mind. She got up. She was healed. She drove the wheelchair into the meeting. Direct in front of the stage. She jumped on stage. She gave testimony. And a lot of healings showed up. No one preached about healing. No one prayed for anybody. God showed up sovereign as a healer. And it's easy for him to deliver you of your pain. Ah, I was in another meeting. And as soon as I started preaching, some crazy guy came down the aisle. He was like this. I said. And then he screamed with a loud voice. He screamed with a loud voice. I'm not a Christian. Yes, Christonia Chem. But I see on stage a lot of angels. The preacher is surrounded with a lot of angels. I looked back, I didn't see any angel. So he came closer. I thought he is maybe mental ill, sick. I stepped down from the stage. He stepped back. Yeah, I stepped down. He jumped back. Angels, all over angels. I said, who are you? Oh, my name is so-and-so, I'm a Muslim. I said, oh, so, welcome. Muslim, Muslim, a Muslim, Muslim. Islam. She is a very good translator, isn't she? Yes. So, I said, so welcome. Do you want to receive Jesus? Yes. So he kneeled down in front of me. He gave his life to Jesus. He interrupted my whole message. So he got saved. Another guy came down the aisle. Holy Spirit talked to me. Shake his right hand. I tried to catch his right hand. He threw it away three times. But then I was faster. I got him. And he screamed, Fire! I was shocked. And then he was, he was doing this in front of me. I said, this is a strange service. I said, what, what are you doing here? Oh, oh, oh. He was completely amazed. I said, what happened to you? Yeah, you shake my hand. And there was so much fire. I had an accident many years ago. An accident, a traffic accident. A car hit me and my whole arm was damaged. The doctors fixed me very good. But this finger, I couldn't move it. It was like a 
it was like a piece of steel. And you shake my hand and it was hot. What is this? I said, what do you think? He said, a miracle. I said, yes. Who are you? Oh, I'm his friend. So he gave his life to Jesus. Two other guys came down the aisle. They looked at me with such eyes. I said, who are you? Who are you? I said, we are friends of those Two. Are you ready to receive Jesus? Yes, so four Muslims, they give their life to Jesus. So how in the world did they get the idea to come in this meeting? Because this was a Christian meeting. This was a worship night. A worship night. It was a worship night. So I asked them. And they pointed with their fingers on two old ladies. Really old grandmas. They gave us the invitation for this meeting. So I was asking the grandmas, how did it happen? They answered me, oh, these Christian meetings, they are sometimes so boring. We had to go out on the street and doing some good things for God. And we met this wonderful young man. And we invited them to come to meet Jesus. Oh, these four wonderful evangelists. I bless them. In the next moment, you won't believe what happened. A guy in the first row, a businessman, nice suit, nice tie, so a German. German, don't do this. They never leave the share. They're never leaving the share in the church. They're sitting there and sitting there and sitting there and, sitting there and, and no one can move them anymore. You are different. So this guy, this businessman, you know what he did? He jumped upon the share. And then he was moving like this. With tears in his eyes. Yeah, he was moving like this. Then he jumped down the chair. He jumped up and he did the same. He was crying and crying. And he did that several times. All the people in this meeting. We had full of attention of them. So then I asked him, what happened to you? Oh, he said, I have a terrible back. I went to doctors for years. All kind of treatments. All kind of medication. And next week I have to go to the hospital. For surgery. So this is my last hope. But just a few moments ago, the Holy Spirit told me I should jump upon the chair. So I did that. And I made these moves. I said, what happened? And he said, I'm completely free. I don't have to go for surgery. Hallelujah. So the whole crowd clapping, exciting. And then almost 40 people in the crowd, they were waving their hands. I said, what's going on? And 40 people declared healing. Where they are on the chairs. If this is the truth, that Jesus is in the house, something better must happen than that we sing songs. Or we have, or we have some long messages. Oh, 
We as Christians sometimes we are very funny. Mek vorpes Kristonian eshat zvarjali. I was in another meeting. Mek urish zhogovume. I made an altar call for healing. Yes, kan chareti vorgan. And a lady came. Mikin yeka. And I said, what's your problem? Same, her back was in terrible condition. And she also next week had a, a, a date for surgery. So she was, she was staying in front of me. Pastor, can you pray for me? I said to her, yes, I can. But what do you want? I need healing. Okay, I said, yes, let's do it. Bow down. She looked at me. She said, what? I said, go down. She said, I cannot. I'm in terrible pain. Don't you pray for me? I said, do you want to be healed? Yes. Go down. Don't you pray for me? Don't you pray for me? You're a pastor. You have to pray for me. I said, no. Go down. And she did it a little bit. I said, more. 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 Go up. Go down. Go up. Go down. Go up. Go down. She got completely healed. Next day, she gave testimony. She said, this German pastor is crazy. I thought he should pray for me. But he made sport with me. He made gymnastic. But it worked. It works. I'm completely healed. I said, what is your profession? She said, I'm a psychologist. I said, okay, bannem. Oh dear. I was in another meeting. I have to share some stories. And, and the service, a huge church. A nice church, nice, nice worship, nice offering, nice announcements, nice message, and then we were done. Everything happened in 90 minutes. So we tried to put the Holy Spirit into 90 minutes. I was on my way to leave the church. A lady showed up on crutches. She walked like this. And she came to me. Pastor, can you pray for me? I said, for what? She said, I am terrible pain. I had a terrible accident. A big truck rolled over me. Almost every bone was broken. I was for 18 months in hospital. The doctors did a very good job. Good job, doctor. Since then, she was handicapped. And and always with pain. So she said, can you pray for me? I said, who in the world did pray for you before me? And she said, every guest speaker Every guest speaker prayed for me. Said, and, and what happened? You're still sick? Yeah, it was a blessing. I said, what do you want? Oh, I would like to be free from my pain. I would like to walk again like a normal person. It was a beautiful woman. 
Schaut Geretzig Kinder. A beautiful woman. Geretzig Kinder. I felt so sorry for her. I said, God, what can we do for this lady? And I said to her, you know what? Take your crutches and carry them on your shoulder and walk. She said, what? Don't you pray for me? I said, no. Take your crutches on your shoulder and walk. She said, I can't do this. Immediately, I will ending up on the floor in pain. I can't do this. I said, you have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. Do what I'm saying you. So then she tried to carry her crutches. And in front of my eyes, she went down. With a face like this. And I said, oh my God. That's the reason why we close our eyes. We think we are not there then. <laughs> and if nothing happens, we are not included. Jesus never served people with closed eyes. And he never prayed with closed eyes. He said, Open your eyes. Look unto heaven. You have to see when you serve people what's going on. But, but I thought, oh my God. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Look at this girl. It's not about you. It's not about, about you, what you feel right now. It's about this girl. And very slowly she got up. She took her crutches on the shoulder. And she walked the whole church around. Everywhere people, what's going on with you? What happened? She said, oh, I, I don't know. But this pastor, he did not pray for me. She was still shocked. I did not pray for her. So finally she stayed in front of me. She said, what shall I do now? I said, go home. Nail your crutches on your wall. As a sign of victory. And tonight we have another service. And and please come without these crutches. And she showed up completely healed. Some weeks later, I received an envelope with a lot of x ray pictures. X ray. Excellent. Okay. She was completely healed. How do you sit in the church? Like in a cinema? In a movie theater? Coming to church? Being entertained? Or are you really expecting something from God? I was in another meeting. Oh, this was a huge stage. And the stairs to the stage were very shakeable. I was really careful to get up the stairs to the stage. So I was on, I was on stage. And then a lady came down the aisle. And she walked like this. Very handicapped. She disrupt, interrupted my message. I like that. So she interrupted my message. She watched me. Said, what's going on with you? She said, the Holy Spirit talked to me. 
said, oh, good. What did he say? I shall go down the aisle and I shall go up on the stage as soon as if I will touch the stage I will be healed. I said, okay, come. can I help you? She said, no, I have to go by myself. Oh my God. I was praying when she walked on stage. I was really praying. I said, okay, God, what are you doing? As soon she start, touched the stage, she was running up and down. Running up and down. Completely healed. She left her crutches on the wall. And she could not walk anymore good because one shoe was different than the other. So she put out her shoes and everything was fine. Oh man. God is in the house. He is in the house. You know, and when, when we are in pain, this is very easy. When the Lord is healing us, immediately you can realize that. Right. Uh, maybe I have ear pain or ear pain. The Lord is touching me. Pain is gone. It's easy. We cannot check every sickness like this. If something is with your blood pressure or with your heart or inside of you, we need to go to the doctor. I like that. I, I like it to send people to the doctor so that they can find out a miracle happen. So God is in the house. He wants to touch you. And he's touching you right now. But better than that. We are all in the healing service by Jesus. We are all in the healing ministry. Every disciple of Jesus is called in the healing ministry. Not only your pastor, not only some famous preachers. You are called to heal the sick. That's what Jesus told his disciples. He showed them how to do. Then he said, and now go. Heal the sick. He did not say pray for the sick. He said, go and heal the sick. He said, go and deliver people of demons. He did not say, go and pray for those people. He said, go and raise people from dead. He did not say, pray for them. And they went out. They came back with great success. One, once he did send out 12 people, he did send out his 12 disciples. Another time, 72. And they all came back completely excited. It worked, Jesus. Even the demons, they left when we served them. And they got delivered. They were so happy. So, in the end of the Gospels, especially Mark, one sign of a real believer, Mark 16, one many signs, but one sign of a real believer, Miracles follow you. Healing follow you. Deliverance follow you. God has given you and me 
a healing ministry. Because it's accomplished. Everything is accomplished. When Jesus carried your sickness on the cross of Calvary, why should you any longer carry your sickness? It doesn't make sense. We believe he, give, he forgive all our sins. But we don't believe he healed all our diseases. We don't believe this. And we have to repent. Because the word of God is truth. He is the healer. And every healing, every deliverance is a wonderful sign of God's love. Don't get stuck in religion. Hey folks, let's do the right job. Hallelujah.